My adventure now finally continues in Big Sky Country, Montana. Star number 41 on Old Glory and the fourth largest state in the Union behind only Alaska, Texas, and California. This state is big, but it's also pretty empty. Its population is number 43, with about as many people as a combination of the two lowest states, Vermont and Wyoming. I'll be spending the next week or so spending time in Glacier National Park, some ghost towns, and down in the plains on the return trip eastward. The early history of Montana of course begins with the Native Americans. This region of Montana was populated by the Salish or Flathead tribes, the Kootenai, the Kalispell, and their enemy, the Blackfeet. Salish simply means the people. Neighboring tribes practice artificial cranial deformation, the practice of stretching the skull in the first few months of an infant's life to change its shape. Salish tribes didn't practice this body altercation and were called flatheads by their neighbors. The Blackfeet tribe was known as a real aggressor in the region. These guys were constantly raiding and attacking their neighbors on all sides. They were enemies with the Crow and the Cheyenne to the south, Sioux tribes such as the Lakota to the southeast, the Flathead Confederation to the west, and the Nez Perce to the far southwest. From my research, it seems like the Blackfeet were in constant hostile contact with their neighbors. Their reservation lies just beyond the Glacier National Park, along the border of Canada near their cousins, the Blood Tribe in Alberta, Canada. Missoula, the largest city I'll be crossing through today, is on the other side of the Lolo Pass in a region historically known as the Hellgate Canyon. When horse culture was introduced to the natives here, many learned just how goddamn useful the buffalo of the Great Plains were. Horses made it easier to hunt them, so deer and other large fauna were quickly forgotten in the effort to hunt buffalo. Hunting buffalo brought a whole new range of tools, larger stores of meat, and changed styles of dwellings from shacks into teepees. To hunt buffalo, however, many tribes that straddled the continental divide in Montana had to travel down into the Great Plains to hunt them. To protect their resources, Blackfeet warriors would periodically raid and ambush their neighbors on the way through regions where valleys would meet. Missoula sits at the confluence of several rivers and valleys. It's named Hellgate because of how important and dangerous the intersection was to getting to the plains. When Europeans first settled in the area, Hellgate Village was founded in 1860. Six years later, the town center was moved to Missoula Mills, Missoula being the Salish word for place of frozen water. Fort Missoula was established 11 years after that, bringing stability and economic growth to the region. Six years after that, the Northern Pacific Railway connected Missoula with the rest of the United States by rail. Six years after that, Montana became a state, and four years later in 1893, Missoula was chosen as the location of the state's first university, the University of Montana. Today, Missoula is the headquarters of the Smoke Jumpers, a special type of wildland firefighter that actually parachutes into remote regions to fight wildfires. They're trained to stop wildfires in remote regions where they're relatively small to prevent them from spreading into large-scale fires. When they're not fighting fires, they're also deployed as disaster relief, forestry, and emergency management. The National Forest Service has a headquarters here. There are nine Forest Service regions. Region number one is headquartered in Missoula. Stepping back in time again, I should note how all this land was set aside for the United States. There are two major reservations in western Montana. The Flathead Reservation, which houses the Bitterroot Salish, the Pendere, and Kootenai, and the Blackfeet Reservation houses the Blackfoot Tribe and shares its western border with Glacier National Park. I'll be passing through the Flathead Reservation. If you're wondering how these tribes were put onto the reservation, I got bad news for you. It's another sad Native American story. Once again, Isaac freaking Stevens, yes, the same governor of the Washington Territory that started all those wars I deemed the Washington woes, is at the beginning of this story. I should begin by stating that the borders of the Washington Territory were not where the borders of my battle maps were in those episodes. The actual territory of Washington stretched far across the Rockies into what would be the Montana Territorial Region. Stevens brought together all the tribes of the region, other than the Blackfoot, of course, and had them sign the Treaty of Hellgate. Again, this effort was to move Native Americans off of land that would be best suited for U.S. settlers and the railroads leading to Seattle. Does it sound familiar? Anyway, the terms of the Hellgate Treaty were extremely hard to translate. The natives of the region were not entirely sure what they had signed, and this was by Governor Stevens' design. Chief Victor had signed the treaty with an X that agreed to the terms. What the tribes were unaware of is that it actually signed away all the land in Missoula and the western Montana regions to whites, with the Flathead Reservation to the north being the actual land they were supposed to go. For 15 whole years, the natives of the region continued to live amongst whites as more and more settlers came and caused friction. The natives, 
still ignorant to what the treaty had subjected them to, still thought that they were going to remain in the Bitterroot Valley forever. Isaac Stevens was hesitant to use military action against the tribes under Chief Victor, and I'm sure there's some reason as to why. Eventually, Chief Victor had died and passed his authority to his son, Chief Charlo. President Grant sent in a representative, James Garfield, to parlay with Charlo and move them onto the reservation in exchange for food, provisions, and payments. Charlo refused, but James Garfield had his signature forged anyway. It was ratified by the Senate and the Salish tribes were ordered onto the reservation. James Garfield would go on to be the 20th president of the U.S., but he had a sort of a comeuppance. He served for six and a half months, or 199 days, before he was assassinated. He has second place for the shortest time in office for a U.S. president. Anyway, Charlo held out for another 19 more years until his people became impoverished and starved. After 36 years of resisting the Treaty of Hellgate, Charlo and his people were forcibly moved onto the Flathead Reservation in a small-scale Montanan Trail of Tears. Today, the population of Native Americans on the reservation is outnumbered two to one, and much of my ride up to Glacier cuts through it. Many of the businesses here are designed to attract tourists coming from Missoula, the largest city and airport in the region. Flathead Lake, a major tourist destination in this region, is one of the cleanest lakes in the populated world by its size and type. I'm flanking the lake right now, less than an hour away from the crown of the continent, Glacier National Park.